Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to migrate, no pun intended, across from fixtures in our console commands to Doctrine Fixtures Bundle. So Doctrine Fixtures Bundle, as the name suggests, is part of the wider sort of Doctrine ecosystem. We've used the migrations in this project and obviously we're using Doctrine. It makes sense therefore to also use their fixtures library. Adding Doctrine Fixtures Bundle is super easy. So we're going to do a composer require Doctrine slash Doctrine fixtures bundle and then whilst that's doing that in the background i'm going to go jump into app app kernel and then under my array of development bundles i create a new entry bundles equals new doctrine bundle fixtures bundle doctrine fixtures bundle now momentarily php storm will pick up this change when it re-indexes and that error there should go away but that's basically all we need to do to get doctrine fixtures bundle into our project so next we need to go ahead and create some fixtures and unfortunately there isn't a generator to do this for us we have to do this manually so i need to create myself a new file and i'm going to use a little bit of php storm magic here to create myself a directory called data fixtures slash orm and then in here i'm gonna have a file called load wallpaper data dot php and so the php storm magic here is because this directory structure doesn't exist it's not only going to go ahead and create me the file it's also going to go ahead and create me those directories and subdirectories as well so that's quite nice what i'm about to type in you can just as easily go and grab from the documentation or you can copy and paste directly from the show notes so we're inside data fixtures orm orm they're being capitalized and sometimes php storm has a bit of a weird one about that found that if you just put the slash in remove it gets rid of that problem for you don't know why that is but it's been an ongoing bug for many versions of php storm so this class is going to be called low wallpaper data and we need to implement fixture interface although php storm doesn't seem to have updated as of yet there we go so we need to implement fixture interface which brings in the use statement for us gives us that error there because if we're implementing an interface Typically, that means we need to implement a method or more. So I'm going to use the generator there to very quickly bring in that function for me, get rid of that bit. And then it's as simple really as doing a new wallpaper. So I'm going to do new wallpaper, which again brings in the appropriate use statement for me. And then unfortunately, it's a little bit of a manual process here. So our file name, we'll just start off by doing the first image inside our web images directory. We don't need to pass the full path. So ours is just going to be abstract background pink in this case .jpeg. Our slug is going to be this part, the image file name without the extension, our width is 1920 and our height is 1080. Okay, straightforward. We can then use the manager to persist this wallpaper and our manager to flush that change, making sure that instead of a colon, I'm using a semicolon. Now then, I think we've got some data in our database from before. I want to get rid of all of that. I'm just going to truncate that table. Cool. And then jump back to the command line where I'm going to do php bin console doctrine fixtures load. So yes, I do want to purge the database. That's not quite true in a way, but for the sake of it at this point, that is basically true. We'll come back to that as we go through, but you can see our data is now inside the database. So it's quite cool, but at the same time, a little bit, well, we sort of feel like I've gone a little bit step backwards from our console command where we were globbing over everything and doing it in a sort of a cooler way but it works and there is a reason for this and the reason is that actually as discussed in the console command video if we're to do it using glob then we don't really have a facility without some hacky regex to associate with a category so as we're using fixtures for the purposes of enabling us to use categories it makes sense now to go ahead and use doctrine generate entity to create ourselves an app bundle category. Now category is super straightforward. We're going to use annotation. We just need a name, which is going to be a string, 255, not nullable. And we do want it to be unique because otherwise, what would be the point of having a category? Anyway, that's it. That's all we need. And as before, when we created our wallpaper, we get the category entity and also a repository, which we don't actually need at the moment. But just to double check, we can see that we've got our category. And we do want to associate or relate these two things together. But before we worry about that, we do need to generate a migration. Now you could do this all as one step. I prefer to do this as two, 
just to sort of separate things into easily digestible chunks, by which I mean we're going to have one migration that actually goes ahead and creates this new category table for us, and then another migration that goes ahead and associates or relates these two things together. So back inside our terminal, I'm going to do PHP bin console doctrine migrations diff. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and created us a new migration, which will go ahead and simply create this categories table for us. We can look under here. You can see this new one, and it's the same statement and whatnot. And if it all goes wrong, we can revert. Hopefully it won't go wrong. Anyway, we want to do PHP bin console doctrine migrations migrate. Yes. And now if we look inside our database, a few things should be new. We've got a category table with nothing in it. Got a wallpaper, nothing's changed. But now we've got a new entry inside our migrations versions table. Okay, cool, making good progress. Get rid of that one. If we've got this category entity in place, however, now what we might as well do is create the relation. Even though I said we're gonna do it in two steps, we might as well do the two steps almost concurrently. So in truth, I can never remember the syntax for relating entities together, no matter how many times I do it. So what we're after is the association mapping and the very first one is good enough. We're going to do many to one unidirectional, which as it says is the most common association between objects. And take the whole lot out of there. It's not quite a direct copy and paste. I'm just going to paste it into my wallpaper and I'm going to say many wallpapers have one category. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of an error there because we need to prefix this with ORM. Same goes for that one point this at category so we'll use the full path there just to be absolutely clear at bundle entity category shouldn't matter we're in the same namespace so it should have picked it up automatically but you never know and then we'll set this to be category underscore id making sure to change this also to category and essentially what this is going to do is it's going to create a new column on our wallpaper table that's called category underscore id and then whatever wallpaper category we're in so if you think about it we've got abstract maybe that's id1 summer id2 winter id3 then if this was a summer wallpaper then when we look in the row that's created for this wallpaper then the category id should be two that's basically all it means although i admit when you first start doing this stuff it is a little bit complicated anyway we're going to do command n on the mac to generate a getter and a setter and we might as well add in here that this, when we're setting a category, should be of type category. And with this in place, we're going to do another diff, which as you can see now, comes up with three SQL statements that will happen. Firstly, we're going to alter the wallpaper table to add in that category ID as discussed. It's going to take an integer value and it's going to be defaulting to null. So that's quite interesting. It allows us to apply this migration to an existing data set or an existing table. And if there are rows inside our wallpaper table, as there currently are, then it's just going to create that column, but set the value to null. So thinking about it then, if we're allowing nulls, then why don't we allow nulls inside our set category? And if we can do that, then we can say, we're either going to return a category here or a null. So that's quite nice. Next up, we're adding that foreign key constraint and we're referencing category ID. So again, that's what we've already talked about. If we set the category entity onto our wallpaper object and that category entity is say summer, which has the ID of two, that's how we're going to figure out that that foreign key relates because it's going to look for the category ID and it references the ID inside that other table. Again, don't overthink it. And finally, we create the index to ensure that lookups are nice and quick. Likewise, all of these changes are reverted should we wish to roll back. So we've got that migration created. Let's go in ahead and apply it. Yes, cool, things have gone through. Let's take a look inside our database. Our third migration has been applied. Category table is fine, nothing in it. And now we've got our category ID column, which has a null value in there and things are looking pretty good.